that my cardio is better and Paul Tracy, 10th all-time in IndyCar wins, who lost 50 pounds over the winter, said he's within 15 pounds of the weight he was when he won the IndyCar title back in 2003. It's astounding the work he's put in. I mean, it just goes to show you how much these guys care about this. I mean, it, it, it is a, a celebration of motorsports champions, successful motorsports stories, and great talents. But uh, I can promise you every single driver in this field really wants to hold up that uh, that trophy at the end of the day and drink some of that Camus wine. Now, Paul, in uh, the machine of that sponsor, lined up on the outside of row number three as we come to the restart. It is Tony Stewart leading Brad Keselowski outside of him. Then Marco Andretti and Elio Castroneves in row two. Kyle Busch is inside of Paul Tracy in row three. Great start from Tony, getting a good gap from Brad there at the start, but he's giving, he's leaving him room on the outside. That's really respectful. Castro Neves and Andretti side by side for third. Whoa, hang on. <laughs> Little simultaneous slide there. That was beautiful coming out of four. Here's our first significant damage of the night. Marco's got a piece hanging down from just behind his right front tire. If that's significant damage, just wait till later. Goodness gracious. Compared to last week, it's not significant, but it's the <laughs> first significant, it's the first notable damage we've Indeed, had tonight. Yes. How's that? Kyle's got a great view of this battle here. He is really hoping that Marco forces Elio up just enough to slide in and take another position away. Oh, no. okie <laughs> Hang on, Elio. Elio didn't turn left that entire straight. <laughs> Somehow I feel like the temperature inside that 06 car just got really warm. That was actually fantastic. Kyle could have flat out just spun Elio, but he basically just drifted him into the corner. And that's what we like to see here at SRX. Just a nice bit of artistic motorsport. Maybe the first ever use of the term <laughs> drifting in one of our races yet. Very well Won't done. Won't be the last. <laughs> well, well done. Clint Boyer quietly on the move, trying to make a move on Paul Tracy there towards the back. Love to see it because if Clint Boyer wins this race, there will not be enough beer in this county to satisfy his celebration. And I personally <laughs> am excited to see that. Well, Boyer's going to get around Paul Tracy. That'll be for eighth place. Now Tracy and Haley Deegan find themselves nose to tail back there. They've had a tussle a couple of times on the track during the course of their shared SRS, SRX experience. Clint Boyer, yeah, Clint Boyer made that restart, that, had that restart basically in the last row, made up a lot of spots pretty early there. That's He's on the move now. I just love the Clint Boyer story in general, right? Guy from Emporia, <laughs> Kansas, was working at a car dealership, racing part-time, got discovered, got a shot with Richard Childress, turned it into something that became a championship and a cup career and all those cup wins. And now he owns the dealership that <laughs> he was working at when he got discovered to become a racer. He's a smart guy. Whoa, way up the bank in turn four went Haley Deegan. And it is Kyle Busch now fending off Marco Andretti as he moves up and takes the third spot and kicks Marco back to fourth. Yeah, Marco's smart. He knows how these tires will fall off. Kyle does not know that yet since it's his first race here. Um, so Marco might just be patient and, and hopefully saving some stuff for the end for a uh, an absolute shootout with maybe Tony Stewart if Tony hasn't burned up his stuff. You think Marco used the term the degradation profile of the tire? <laughs> well, I can promise you uh, degradation profile is uh, a bit too advanced for maybe Clint Boyer right now, but uh, who knows? <laughs> we were talking to Joseph Newgarden earlier. And Ken Schrader walked up as Joseph uttered the term, the degradation profile of the tire. And Schrader <laughs> said, what does that mean? <laughs> Joseph said, okay, tire wear. Yes. <laughs> well, we just came from racing at Iowa where our tires were degrading at a wild rate. So Joseph's very, very used to that right now. And uh, he, he might just be saving stuff. I hope so, because I'm a big Joseph Newgarden fan. There is Ryan Newman pressing Elio Castroneves, who's right behind Marco Andretti. 
So this is all stacked up for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And at the tail end of that, it's Boyer having a peek underneath Bobby Labonte. Bobby sees him coming and gives him a little bit of racing room. Clint is on the move. He is up four spots since the restart. And uh, that's impressive because we haven't seen that much movement really throughout the field at all so far tonight. It's challenging. I mean, you put 12 equally prepared cars, all driven by superstar drivers on a short track. Absolutely, and every driver is gonna need a, something a little bit different uh, out of their car, and there's not a lot that you can do here either in the car. You can make some brake bias adjustments to try to help uh, help your car either turn or, or get a little bit more rotation at the center, but there's really not much else you can do other than uh, using your feet efficiently. Clint Boyer has been very efficient with his feet, his steering wheel, and his conditioning. <laughs> yeah, he's an absolute athlete behind the wheel right now, and I respect it. He's using more of the track than anyone else, too, so that means he's working harder than anyone else. Maybe a little bit of a dirt track background there, too, coming to hunt the groove. I love it. It's going to pay off for him. If, if, if the rest of the field doesn't figure it out, Clint might have an advantage here at the end. So Tony Stewart, who has led more in this main event than he had in the season, in this season prior, both main event and heats combined after starting on pole in this one, looking for what would be his series leading fifth career SRX victory and got, uh, got the glow in the dark helmet going too. Yeah, you gotta love the glow in the dark helmet. And Tony Stewart hates losing. So he's, uh, he's feeling good up front right now. This is where, uh, we know that he belongs and he knows that he belongs and uh, I'm very curious to see when the uh, fenders start flying later after another late race restart potentially or restart here very soon. Uh, yellow flag number two in our 100 lap main event tonight. So it comes out here as they complete the 40th of those 100 laps. It hasn't been contact free tonight, though it's not been to the extreme side of that like Beautiful it was at Stafford a week there. ago. Kyle Busch drifting Elio Castroneves into the corner. Oh, and that one too. Maximize your freedom and value in a pre-owned RV from Camping World. With over 18,000 used RVs to choose from and starting at less than $5 a day, we have a floor plan to fit your family's needs and a payment to fit your budget, like an RV that sleeps five, just $3.50 a day, or an RV that sleeps seven, just $7.30 a day. It's no wonder Camping World is America's used RV super center. Start your journey here and see America for less. Camping World, over 1 million RVs sold. You push it. You try to slide it. You even try to hold them shut, but your doors just won't stay closed no matter what. Introducing Ruby Monkey Magnets, brand new ultra thin magnetic plates that will keep your doors and drawers shut and now may be your last chance to get them at a low price. Just peel to reveal the super strong adhesive. Place the monkey, then the magnet and close. Installation is that simple, and now you have a door that will stay shut. So forget drawers that won't stay closed. Every drawer stays closed. It's so fast and so easy. Even large sliding doors or cordless window blinds. Everything stays closed with Monkey Magnets. The secret is the ultra-strong industrial magnet that's powerful attraction keeps your doors and drawers securely shut. These magnets are so strong they can hold this hammer that's nearly five pounds. Plus, they're super thin. They'll fit just about anywhere, and they stay out of sight. Even screw them in for a more permanent solution. Monkey Magnets are perfect for cabinets, dresser drawers, sliding closet doors, accordion doors, and more. They're made of ultra-durable metal, so even your outdoor problems are solved in an instant because they're corrosion and rust resistant. Use them anywhere outside the house, even on that stubborn mailbox that won't stay shut. Monkey Magnets can stick anywhere from drywall to all types of wood frames, metal surfaces, and more. Call or go online now to get eight sets of Monkey Magnets for only $9.99. Monkey Magnets are guaranteed to last 10 years or your money back. But wait, due to rising costs and supply chain shortages, this may be your last chance to get Monkey Magnets at this low price. There is a strict limit of one full house pack per order while supplies last. So order now to keep all your doors and drawers shut tight with Monkey Magnets. Call 1-800-701-0154. That's 1-800-701-0154. Call or visit at monkeymagnets.com. So call 1-800-701-0154. Order now.
ESPN's Thursday Night Thunder with the Camping World SRX Series at Pulaski County Motorsports Park tonight. We're in the main event of the third of our six race summer series. Tony Stewart has led all the laps in the main so far after earning pole position through his finish in our two heat races tonight. Been uh, relatively incident free so far tonight, though a little damage to the Marco Andretti car, and they just had to pick up a piece of debris that came off of, I believe, that machine. Uh, but we're getting ready to go back racing here in one more lap. Absolutely. Been fairly calm so far. A little bit of contact here and there. We obviously had uh, the Kyle Busch and Elio Castroneves uh, coming together and a couple other, you know, just light contact. But uh, not bad so far. And pretty, I'm sure the SRX mechanics are also very happy. Well, we got just a second. Big congratulations to Terry Lingner, the founder oh, yes. of the original Thursday Night Thunder all those years ago on uh, ESPN. Just been selected for induction into the USAC Hall of Fame. An congratulations, person, Terry. Terry. Yes, he is. Here we come to the restart. restart from Brad that time really trying to make that outside lane work he's got to be able to do it if there's a late race restart oh, oh contact oh. three wide and uh, didn't work out it's Andretti uh, excuse me that's uh yeah that's Marco that got shoved up the racetrack yeah it looked like uh Ryan Newman was the meat and the sandwich there of the three wide uh situation and Marco got the rough end of it so Andretti has fallen back to ninth place and up front, outside, Keslowski pokes the nose ahead. He leads that lap at the finish line. Great use of the high line there. I mean, that is, that's how you want to do it if you're coming to race for the checkered flag here at the end. Stewart back to the inside, not giving up yet. Now it looks like the racing is really starting to kick off. This is what we've been waiting for. Keslowski able to clear Stewart, but remember these drivers don't have spotters up on the roof in these cars. They're on a common channel from race control for safety purposes, but they've got to make decide when they're clear themselves. All right, who, who caused what here? Well, that was a, a bit of an ambitious move there from Elio. Um, yeah, <laughs> he basically tried to use two other humans as his brake. So uh, sometimes that happens here in close uh, close quarters motor racing. Well, if eight tires are better than four, as that old saying goes, I guess 12 tires are, are better than four, too. Well, that's just science, Alan. That's Thank just you. science. I'm glad I carried the one. <laughs> Here's Clint Boyer looking for a spot under Castro Neves. This is for fifth place. My heart just started beating faster thinking about maybe Clint Boyer potentially being on the podium here. This is a great drive from the absolute legend Clint Boyer so far. Without question. Then he gets to go uh, to, to Michigan next week with Harvick also in the field. Ooh, contact up front. Kyle Busch laid a fender on Tony Stewart, or a bumper. Slid smoke up out of the groove. This is for second place. Yeah, they're really figuring out where to, uh, where to make the moves here. And Kyle Busch in second place. It was only a matter of time. Everyone, I think, knew that Kyle was going to be fast here eventually. So is this the bump and run? Did I see correctly? Let's see. That is a textbook bump and run. Just use the door up a little bit. Use Tony Stewart up a little bit. Tony's going to be very unhappy. He's going to have a frowny face right now. And uh, I know that Tony's going to want to pay that back come the end of the race. Well, he'll probably have a chance to have at least another restart lined up anyway. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So now Kyle Busch in that red machine with the Florida Panthers logo on the hood, chasing the Camping World car of Brad Keselowski, Cup Series champion from 2012, who gets to go home to Berlin in Michigan, his home state next week. Here's Kyle Busch. Oh, he gets oh. Keselowski and turns him around. He tried the exact same move on Tony, and Brad Keselowski was not having it. That is a darn shame. Brad is going to be very upset about that. I would think so. And Tony is currently upset with Kyle as he's pulling up right next to him to probably wave some hands at him. Or display some fingers of sorts. Well, try to do the exact same thing he did to Stewart down in turn one. 
And again, without spotters, this is very difficult because a spotter in the NASCAR Cup Series would have told Brad that uh, he had a car looking inside. And if anything, to be honest, Kyle was there. Like, Kyle wasn't going to disappear. But, uh, yeah, with no spotters here, that's really, really difficult to make work unless Brad is aware of what's going on there. And also, Brad's trying to be defensive, too. Thankfully for Brad, though, no contact. So the tires are going to be slightly flat spotted, potentially, which is going to yeah, suck. Yeah, not good. But uh, no contact with the wall. That's one of the things that uh, folks that come to this track and run this track regularly told me would help in, the, in an event like a, a contact at a spin there, a flatter racetrack, that would have been the back end of the fence. But with the banking here to help, Brad kind of caught it. You're pondering something. Well, I, I want to want to have a chat with some of these guys uh, in the middle of the race. Um, I would like to talk to Clint Boyer. Do you think we can talk to Clint Boyer right now? Eh, we'll get him after we Yeah, let's, let's wait while the race when he's is more busy. And here's why I think that's a wise decision on your part. They're getting the one to go signal here. And you've got Tony Stewart outside of Kyle Busch for this restart. <laughs> I mean, this is a, uh, a race fan's dream right here. We've got uh, Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart, Ryan Newman. <laughs> I mean, Elio Castroneves, Paul Tracy, Clint Boyer. Yeah, Ooh. I mean, there's Newman up to third inside of row two. So um, this is going to go one of two ways, fantastic or absolutely awful. Yeah, don't count Newman out from being a factor in how this little mix gets decided, too. Restart line and green flag. Tony up the track just enough to make sure he cleared him. And now he's going to want to put a gap on these guys. Stewart clears Newman for second. Watching Boyer to the inside of Castro Neves. He'll take oh. fourth. Elio had a big moment out of two. Almost lost it while he was alongside Clint there. Meantime, poor Brad Kozlowski's all the way back in 12th spot, tail end of the field. Yeah, that is going to be a long rest of the race if he's going to get back up to the lead. Cars bouncing off the wall there. It looked like Joseph Newgarden bouncing off the wall. Him and Paul Tracy made some contact together. Yep. Bobby Labonte right there in the middle of that. Ken Schrader, Marco Andretti sliding around to the inside of Schrader. Couple guys who got shuffled back there, Marco and Brad, Kat, Brad Kislowski. That is super frustrating as this race does seem to be a pretty serious track position race. Unless you're Clint Boyer, and he's moved up all the way from the back. Let's try to dial up Clint Boyer and see if we can't distract him or uh, or just give him some inspiration. Clint Boyer, it's Connor Daly up in the booth. You got a copy? <laughs> well, you look great out there. You're the king of the apron. Uh, please tell us on the front straight how you plan on uh, passing Ryan Newman. Watch it right here. Watch this. Watch the pass off the floor. <laughs> Maybe off a two. <laughs> that bumper's tough. I think you could do it right here. Let's go. Come on. Well, I kind of see that was easy, Clint. Great work. Uh, he's still out there, though. Not clear. <laughs> Wait, are we on the air? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on the air. Clear. Great work. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Keep using that apron. <laughs> I think I just spotted for Clint Boyer. Is that yeah, cheating? It's, no, it's a good job. <laughs> good job. That might have been one of the most entertaining moments I've had all year. <laughs> well, I'm happy. Yeah. We enjoyed it, too. Uh, so now Boyer working on Tony Stewart for second place. I mean, this is truly incredible. I have no idea why none of these other drivers are not using the apron. Like, he is finding so much grip at the bottom of both one and two and three and four. Or he's burned his tires off. Well, still, still got 30 laps to go in our main event. <laughs> wow, this is a uh, 
this is a this has been a fantastic race so far. I I, I can't wait to see what happens when Clint catches Kyle Busch. Has he burned up his tires? Will he be aggressive? Will Kyle Busch be aggressively defending? Well, I would think the answer to the last one is yes. <laughs> the other two remain to be seen. But uh, but we got 28 laps to go in our main event. Clint Boyer now is all the way up to second spot. Tony Stewart's racing with Ryan Newman for third place. Elio Castroneves is fifth, and Paul Tracy is sixth. Yeah, Paul Tracy having a great race. I mean, honestly, Paul and Elio have kind of just been sneaky staying there right in the midfield, and, and hopefully they're saving their stuff. There is the caution flag. <laughs> Perfect. We think so, too. 24 laps to go in our main event tonight. And I venture to say the plot is thickening <laughs> as we get closer to the finish. Well, there are some bruised feelings out there at the moment, and we're not done yet. Camping World, we make seeing America fun and affordable. Take home this new Coleman Lantern or Rubicon for as little as $5 a day. 5, 10, 15, or this new travel trailer for less than $10 a day. $15 gets you a new fifth wheel. And for only $20 a day, you could drive off in a brand new motorhome. 5, 10, 15, we make RVing fun, simple, and affordable. See America for less at Camping World. 5, 10, This weekend, see one of the best action movies ever made. Go, 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 go. Don't miss it on the big screen. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, ready PG-13, now playing. You got me. Hey, you're it. Imagine a world with no drama. For the guarantee of high-quality promotional items delivered on time, go to 4imprint.com. 4imprint, for certain. Hey guys, this is Joe, founder of Viore, and I want to tell you about one of my favorite pants in the Viore lineup, the Sunday Performance Jogger. The fabric on this jogger is absolutely incredible. It's got a more tailored, modern fit, making them super versatile, and it has a zip pocket to secure your belongings. Whether you're lounging around the house or you're putting yourself through a tough workout in the gym, the Sunday has you covered. And that's why the Sunday Jogger is my everyday jogger. Even the IndyCar drivers in our superstar field have figured out how to use the bumpers and the fenders in these cars. Oh, that was another one of those uh, may or may not be clear moments. Paul Tracy, if you have a spotter again, that's a moment where he says, uh, yikes, still there. But uh, clearly Paul had no idea that uh, Indy 500 champion Joseph Newgarden and elite fitness athlete Joseph Newgarden was outside. <laughs> so here comes the field, doubled up for the restart. They're getting the one-to-go signal now at the start-finish line. Kyle Busch with Tony Stewart to his outside. Then Clint Boyer, who started this main event back in ninth place and is running third. Also you interesting to see he chose the inside. He did not want to start second. He chose to forgive basically all of what happened earlier and start third instead of second. He's third. Ryan Newman is fourth. Then you've got Castro Nevis and Tracy back in row three and fifth and sixth. Coming to the green flag with 21 laps to go in our main event. You saw there in turn one, Kyle Busch started to peek just a little bit into the apron there and, and, and feel that grip. But Clint Boyer just fired Tony Stewart up into turn three. Tony got a nudge on Kyle Busch off turn two, but Boyer got a nudge on Stewart in turn three. They're side by side for second as Kyle Busch gets away. Now Boyer clears Stewart. Great battle there with, between these uh, these these three 
NASCAR Cup Series legends at the front. Everybody's figuring out now, hey, I'm watching Boyer do this. I'm going to try that apron. Stewart's below the line. Newman's down there. Newgarden is also down well. there, and he's also wrecking his former teammate, Elio Castroneves. And, wow, that there is... Chain reaction. Bobby Labonte has spun around in turn number three. Marco Andretti has spun in the stack up. And that all after Elio Castroneves was sideways for about half the back straightaway trying to save his car after contact off turn two. Yeah, there was enough spinning happening down the back straight and into three that they were going to hand out X Games medals after this. Goodness gracious. Brian Deegan's here. Brian Deegan I mean, is here. I did see him. Yes. He's, he's got a pile of them. All right, watch Castro Neves, third car from the left of the frame. He gets nipped by. Oh, Joseph Newgarden <laughs> getting a little aggressive on the bumper. Oh, and then that last shot as Newgarden cleared Castro Neves when they clanged wheels there. That sent Elio up in front of Bobby Labonte. Yeah, a lot going on there. El <sighs> Joseph, Joseph tried to get off Elio's left rear, but then he hit a bump in the racetrack, and that kind of sent him right back into Elio. Just tough to control cars, uh, you know, when you're beating and banging like that. And also, something you have to remember about us IndyCar drivers as well, we're not used to power steering that these cars have. And when the, the steering can react so much faster than we're used to um, because of how easy these are to steer compared to the cars that we drive. Yeah, I drive in an Indy car around the road courses and street courses and the oval tracks with no power steering. It's like wrestling a bear. Well, there's the damage to the Castro Neves machine you saw on that right front tire. And so uh, his car getting uh, a look while they double up and we're a couple laps away from the restart. Well, let's uh, dial up Clint Boyer Hang one on. one more time Hang here on. Hang just on. to make sure there you that go. Uh, we can talk to him while he's a little bit, little bit more calm. Clint, it's Connor again up in the booth. You got a copy? Buddy. I do apologize for, uh, for for talking to you while you were busy, but you were doing a great job, honestly. I, I, I noticed you using the apron. No one else has used it like you yet. I, do you have enough tires left to get the win here? Well, it helped when I saw Kyle move Brad and spin him out, so it's kind of like a free mulligan, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I think you're doing a fantastic job. You're my pick to win, so please don't let me down, and uh, I hope my spotting for you was okay. No pressure. It's just Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch to pass. A couple cup champions. No pressure. We'll see what we can do here. Good luck, my friend. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Clint Boyer's been the show tonight, right? <laughs> He's pretty much a show every time he wakes well, up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, fans uh, back on their feet here as they get the one to go signal on the racetrack, and that is going to give us a restart with 13 laps to go. So we'll have it again with. We're definitely getting close tonight. It's it's going to be all gloves off now. 14 to go at a short track like this. That'll go by really fast. Kyle Busch trying to win in his SRX debut tonight. You saw some of the facts and figures on that. Here they come to the green flag. Uh, Tony Stewart just can't quite make that outside lane work around one and two. If he could, he'd get a much better run in the three, four to try to keep, keep Kyle Busch from uh, getting the best run possible. Boyer and Stewart for second. And Newman lurking behind. I bet Tony Stewart is begging to get to the bottom of the racetrack right now. That seems to be where the true speed is found at the moment. Oh, oh trouble, front straightaway. It Big is contact. Newgarden and Tracy, and they collect Ken Schrader and sweep him to the inside wall. Haley Deegan also spun around. That was not a fun accident to watch. It just looked like, again, a lot of bumps coming off of four here, and when two cars are side by side, one moment can uh, cause disaster. Real shame for Ken Schrader as well. He was uh, having a silent night, but uh, in, uh, moving up slowly but surely. Minding his own business and got swept away. That was a big one. 
That is, that is uh, no fun. I have no idea how Paul Tracy's car is even still moving. Most of it looks like it is not wanting to remain attached to the vehicle. It's not moving well, so here's no. another look. So as you see here, both cars, I mean, Paul just flat out ran Joseph into the wall. That was, that's a real shame. I mean, that that's that's easily avoidable. Um, and, and it's a shame because there's a lot of damage to a lot of good drivers and a lot of good race cars as well. And this is on board with Joseph Newgarden. Yeah, that, that's inexcusable, really. I mean, Paul was hoping Joseph Newgarden was going to be a magician and disappear, and that's physically not possible. So you hate to see that for, for both Joseph and all the other cars who were innocent victims. Bobby Labonte's view. Yeah, this is when you just get on the brakes and uh, hope everyone else behind you got on the brakes as well. That's no fun at all. That's that's the worst case scenario for a driver who's uh, going through a big smoky field of absolute zero vision. So Joseph Newgarden, Paul Tracy, Ken Schrader. Looks like there's going to be some uh, some interesting words shared here. Perhaps an altercation of sorts. Having a conversation. No doubt with humor as Kenny always does, but he always makes his point. You think Ken would throw a punch? No. I don't think so either. Perhaps with 10 to go, Matt. Well, we've caught up with Ken Schrader there. So you lived it. Walk us through it, Kenny. I'd like to see it, but I'm pretty sure Green had Black shoved into the outside wall. I'm not running another race with him. I'm done. All right, Kenny Schrader frustrated here tonight. Those two had tangled in our first race of the season at uh, Stafford in Connecticut. Strong words there. That is, uh, in, in a situation like this, where there has been fantastic racing all night, and there, there's being the bad boy of the series, there's being, you know, a little bit of uh, rough here and there, but uh, but that's tough to see for a, a series that you hope to be, you know, everyone having the best time possible. Well, that's, uh, that's a heavily damaged race car. And a very tough, uh, tough note on what's been a very, very fun night of racing so far. But uh, Schrader, Paul Tracy, Joseph Newgarden, and Marco Andretti's car was damaged, although he's still on the racetrack. Matt? And you can see what's left of Paul Tracy's SRX machine. Uh, we talked to Ken Schrader. He voiced his displeasure about what happened. What's your side, Paul? I mean, uh, Newgarden and I were bouncing off of each other for a couple laps, and as I got a nose ahead of him, half a car length ahead of him, and I just got hooked and turned sideways down a straightaway. I mean, it's just hard racing at the end there, 10 laps to go, and everybody's now going for it hard, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's a tough track to get off the corner. It's, it's a bad deal for everybody. All right. Connor, you called it. You said it was going to be pretty rough here with about 15 to go. I think Paul was um, a little bit ambitious on it. How far, how far up the side of Joseph Newgarden he got? They were pretty much side by side. That's uh, that's not a gap you can close. It. Joseph Newgarden could never have backed out of that move. So, hate to see that for Joseph. Hate to see that for everyone. So I talked about uh, that uh, Ken Schrader and Paul Tracy had tangled in the first race of our series back at Stafford Speedway in Connecticut. Here was a look at that. And uh, after that race, when they got back into the pit area, Ken walked down and had a conversation with Paul. And at the beginning, early on in the night, in our second race, uh, Paul went for a little spin in uh, the heat race at Stafford week two. And uh, now here we are tonight. And obviously there are some pretty tough feelings there, uh, especially on the part of, uh, of Ken. 
So they're doubled up here for a restart. We're going to have 10 laps of green flag racing to go in our main event. And it's Kyle Busch again with Tony Stewart to his outside, Clint Boyer behind him, and Ryan Newman on the outside of row two. Now, here's somebody to keep an eye on. See that light blue camping world machine? Brad Kozlowski missed all the crashing cars <laughs> in front of him after getting spun out from the lead earlier. He's there on the inside of row three. Brad is back. He's in the game now. You guys better watch out. And he is angry. I can guarantee that, too. If there's one person we know, I, I think we've seen this in the Cup Series. Brad's not afraid to use that bumper. Here they come. Green flag. Ten green flag laps to go. I think if Clint Boyer wants a shot at this win, he's got to get through Tony as fast as possible and get to Kyle Busch. You can't let Kyle Busch get a gap. There's not enough laps yet left. Stewart hanging on to the outside, trying to squeeze down in front of Boyer for second place. Yeah, Boyer didn't quite have the drive off of two that he needed to make the move on Tony, but he's super fast out of 3-4, but Tony can see it. He's, he's moving down the track a little bit. He's not allowing his car to slide up at all. So Stewart to second, but that's allowed Kyle Busch to put about five, six car lengths of an advantage between himself and those two tussling for runner-up. Yeah, Kyle Busch leading by this much is about as not as surprising. I, I don't think anyone is surprised by that. Boyer keeps trying that bottom, but he can't find a way to hook it up like he had been earlier. Yeah, and it's sometimes when you run the bottom for that many laps, it is aggressive on the tires. Usually they say that if you can run a bit of a higher line, sometimes that preserves the tires a little bit better than running the bottom. And, and Clint has been running the bottom all night. Well, it looks like a race for second at the moment, but depends. Those two guys in second could turn each other around and bring out a yellow. Absolutely, and honestly, if, if Kyle just goes off and wins this, I'm still interested in the battle for second because these guys are putting on a great race right now. It is, and they've been knocking around pretty heavily farther back, too. Marco Andretti, Elio Castroneves, Bobby Labonte, Haley Deegan. But here's the race for second. Boyer continuing to try to find a way through Tony Stewart. He got a real good drive off of four there. He's exactly where he needs to try to complete this move, and he's going to clear Tony there easy. But does Tony see the line that Clint's been using, and now can he take advantage of it? Oh, we got another spinner. Trouble. Marco Andretti has some contact and gets spun around in turn three. The caution is out with three laps to go. <laughs> Poor Marco's car is falling apart, too. That is a darn shame. He was an innocent victim of that last crash as well. So after the last wreck, that nose piece you see had been knocked loose. And then the last, before he spun in turn three, in turn one, his car bottomed out heavily and had a big shower of sparks. Like, you see the right front there sparking? Like something came loose under the car. And then when he tried to turn down into the corner, he yeah, was... Yeah, when, when you go through an accident like he just went through, it's... it's uh, there's a low chance that um, other things aren't severely damaged as well. Yeah, he clearly, it looked like he had something fail there on the right front. It's, it's, it's kind of odd to see a car jolt left like that, um, but he clearly is, is staying out because why not? He's gotta, he's gotta get as many points as possible in this race. Well, they're not gonna let him stay out on the track like that, you see, as he heads behind the wall. Probably right. also can't see with the hood like that. Well, shedding debris around the racetrack, too. Yeah. See that, that sparking underneath yeah. the right front? That started when he went into turn one before the spin down in turn three. So that's too bad. I don't think that'll buff out. No. <laughs> Not in three laps. No, sir. Boy, the field's really thinned out a little bit here. <laughs> the herd has thinned, for sure. <laughs> and, uh, wow, I'm sure Kyle Busch hates life right now as it's a uh, basically a green white checker type situation so there are eight of our 12 starters on the racetrack they're sending the amr safety team around to just uh, have a final track inspection and make sure any debris that marco's car might have shed has been picked up and disposed of and we are getting the one to go signal here at the line so we have three laps to go in our main event Man, I, I am, I'm trying to predict why I'm, I'm looking at this thinking, I don't know who's going to go where. I don't know. Uh, 
continuously Clint Boyer picks the bottom. I think Tony Stewart has to go to the top and try to get something out of uh, Kyle Busch to slow him down a little bit. But uh, this is going to be very interesting. They pulled the damaged nose piece from Marco Andretti's car. He's trying to catch up to the field. Kyle Busch in the red machine. Inside, Tony Stewart outside. Clint Boyer, Ryan Newman in row two. Green flag, three laps to go. Great start from Tony Stewart. He's got to stay to the outside of Kyle here to get to have any chance of competing with him in a turn three. Boyer rolls the bottom. Stewart tries to roll the top, but Kyle Busch gets away. Two laps to go. Clint Boyer is getting extra greedy with that apron. He wants all the grip possible as he tries to make this move on Tony Stewart. He's going to get it done, but is Tony going to fire him off into turn one with two to go here? Smooth sailing for Kyle Busch. Well, he is happy as can be. He has gotten away, and he'll see the white flag here. One lap to go for Kyle Busch. Farther back, Keselowski and Newman in a fight. That's for fourth place with Keselowski trying to continue to recover the lost ground but off of turn number four will come Kyle Busch in his first try he is going to win the Camping World SRX Series main event in Pulaski County Virginia fantastic race honestly Kyle did everything he needed to do he learned in the heat races he uh, he was smart in the final and Clint Boyer I still think you know, if there was a vote for driver of the night, Clint Boyer, I mean, he had to come from all the way in the back. I mean, Absolutely. That, that's, that's, that's incredible. Well, Kyle Busch very much looking forward to get the chance to jump in on a couple of these SRX races after watching it the last couple of years. He's a winner in pretty much everything he does, so you got to respect that. And uh, Kyle Busch is one of those guys that I really hope gets a chance at the Indy 500 as well. He's, he's won everything else. Might as well come and try the Indy 500 as well. Oh, he'd like to. Kyle, his first SRX win and his first start. Fourth driver to win an SRX main in their series debut. And this is now the tenth different driver to win a main event in our Superstar Racing Experience competition. We're on a pretty good bit of a roll of different winners, too. Six different winners in the last six main events. Well, I mean, it just goes to show you how competitive this series is and how good all these drivers are. You never know who's going to win every week out. It's, it's, it's fantastic to watch. I bet this is the first time Kyle Busch has not done a donut or a giant burnout after a victory. I think that's probably appropriate. <laughs> given the use of these cars will get six weeks in a row. Three victories for tough guys in a row as well this season so far. Someone from IndyCar has got to bring the fight to him. Well, Tony Kanaan gave it a good run last week. And, uh, tonight, it's going to be a guy who wanted to come here to have fun, Kyle Busch. Well, Matt, I think the winner has the most fun, right? The guy loves chasing trophies, Slinger National, Snowball Derby, Prelude of the Dream. You love those special all-star type short track events. This is another one. Why does this one mean so much to you? Because you're watching them all at home the past two years. Absolutely. No, it's just, uh, it's fun. You know, it's just a, a great atmosphere and environment and everything to be able to just be around. Um, some really cool and really great race car drivers, some great personalities as well, too. And I love being able to just, hey, buddy, what's up, Rex? And uh, just love being able to race, you know? Um, I'd race more if I could, but um, there's only so much you can get in and so much you can do. But um, just want to thank the, the Florida Panthers, Camping World, Bass Pro, um, Goodyear, everybody, Sparco, Rowdy Energy, all the, all the fine folks that uh, have helped me to be able to get here, Hawk and everybody from SRX, all the hard work they've done. They've got a few more. This week that, uh, that got to get worked on, I was about ready to be a part of that at one of those moments in the race, but glad it all worked out. Let's go back to that. You traded some uh, decals with Tony Stewart, which was a, a racing deal, but the Brad Keselowski incident, another racing deal. What, how would you describe that? Yeah, I mean, the <clears throat> Castro Neves was on the top there, and he was really, really, really hacking to the bottom trying to get down. And 
I'm like, no, when somebody knocks a hole for you, you want to follow them through, you know? So it's just, it's a free spot for me, not for you. So keep your nose in there. And, um, you know, it uh, knocked the fender out a little bit on it there at that time. Uh, and then the Brad deal, yeah, I got a good run off of four and I really wasn't ready to pass him yet for the lead, but got a good run on him, got a good launch and was alongside of him right front to left rear. And he, uh, he arced it out nice and then came down and I was there. So, uh, you know, part of racing, yeah, racing deal, but um, you know, it's hard in these things because the vision's not great in the mirrors and everything else, like I get it, but uh, you also gotta be aggressive in that same in that same stance in being able to hold your ground and uh, and take those spots when you can get them. Fun meters certainly pay. Kyle Bush taking home some hardware from Southwest Virginia. And gets that very uh, cool looking SRX winner's trophy to take home with him as well. So as we look at uh, the final results from our main event tonight, it's Bush with the win and Clint Boyer, Connor Daly's driver of the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, great to see. Apart from the giant, massive, chaotic accident that we witnessed, uh, I love to see this event tonight. We enjoyed a lot of side-by-side -side action. We saw drivers running all across the track. Clint Boyer on the apron, a couple guys running up high. Um, it, I thought it was a great racetrack for the SRX series. A lot of fun. Hey, Connor, fun to have you back with us again, and we'll see you uh, week six, right? Yes, I will be back at Lucas Oil uh, Raceway, I believe. All right, good, good, good deal. Connor Daly joining us tonight here in uh, Southwest Virginia for a spectacular night of short track racing. Championship standings in the SRX series for Camping World. Ryan Newman still leads the championship over Marco Andretti and Tony Stewart as we get ready to move on from here in Virginia to Michigan. Next week, we head to Berlin Raceway in Marne, Michigan, just outside of Grand Rapids. Next Thursday night, nine o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. Week four of Thursday Night Thunder and week four of the Camping World SRX Series for this year. And that's the last paved track race. That uh, racetrack, very uniquely shaped. Drivers all looking forward to it. And it should be a spectacular night at Berlin next week. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN with El Duncan and Nicole Briscoe. Uh, and we've got some highlights to follow up uh, from this one for sure. Plenty for Connor Daly, Matt Yoakum, and our entire SRX crew here in Virginia, Alan Bestwick saying so long from Radford, Virginia. Kyle Bush is your winner on Thursday Night Thunder. This episode of Sports.